Divine Truth Interviews. Jesus, Mary, and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. This is the second part of the interview, God, Religion and Atheism, ABC Q&A, Dockings and Pell. We're after watching an interview between prominent atheist Richard Dawkins and Catholic Australian Cardinal Gregory Pell, aired on the ABC Q&A TV program in Australia. Mary begins an interview of Jesus about God, religion, and atheism, comparing Jesus' answers with those given on the TV program. The session was recorded on the 3rd of April 2018 from 2.40 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So let's now um, pose the first question that was um, put to the panel by uh, an audience member during the program. Yeah. At Easter, Australia's religious leaders invoke the name of God in order to preach peace, tolerance, political integrity, social and moral fortitude, a social and moral fortitude, all obviously positive and worthwhile values. <laughs> in what way is the practice of these values dependent on an existing God? Is it possible for an atheist to be a peace-loving, socially responsible person? Hmm. Good question, but, but already flawed in its presumptions, mm -hmm. I feel. Uh, firstly, I must comment about religious leaders and their self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, frequently, religious leaders have entered a state of self-righteousness where they say things like, you know, that we're going to have tolerance, integrity, social and you know fortitude and yep. moral values and love and so forth mm -hmm. but frequently the religious leaders don't display it yeah so so that in itself is a problem mm -hmm. you can't expect people to follow you unless you are actually doing what you're preaching yeah and what i observe is that many religious leaders do not do what they preach mm -hmm. so that that is a huge problem and that definitely applies to almost every religious faith Mm -hmm. like, and particularly to the Christian and Muslim faith, mm. because we see religious leaders there promoting wars. Yeah. We see religious leaders in, involved in things like pedophilia. Yeah. We see religious leaders, you know, involved in uh, behaviour that they condemn in others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, this is all, in the, and, and it's the same in the Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. We see religious leaders that promote war, that promote violence, bloodshed. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, how is that promoting tolerance? Now, yes, the words of tolerance, social and moral fortitude are definitely all positive values. I yeah. agree. My question is, do religious leaders demonstrate these values? Mm. And I, I've not seen many that do, to no. be frank. And in fact, many religious leaders, when they pass, I've observed them passing, and many of them historically have passed into the hells of the spirit world because of their lack of these things. Yeah. So while they use the words, the real question becomes, are they actually doing what they claim mm -hmm. that we should do mm -hmm. in order to have a peaceful, happy life on earth? Yeah. Right. So that, that's the first thing that needs to be said. Yeah. Now, the second thing is, it's interesting part of the question when they say, in what way is the practice of these values dependent on an existing God? Well, there's almost the presumption in religion that it is dependent on an existing God. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you wipe out God, most religious faiths have the concept that if you wipe out God, there's no reason to be loving. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to be kind. Mm -hmm. And that's total crap. Mm -hmm. There is a reason to be kind and loving. And that is, if you're kind and loving, other people will probably be kind and loving with you back mm -hmm. and you'll have a more peaceful and naturally harmonious life. Yeah. So it actually makes sense yeah. socially to be kind and loving. Yeah. Right, so and display the integrity and tolerance and yeah. all those things. Yeah. yeah, so the presumption by religions that without God there's no point mm -hmm. to being kind and loving. And 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 this is the case in many religious faiths, unfortunately. Many religious faiths have the concept that God will punish you if you're not kind and loving. And so their only real reason, their only real motivation for being kind and loving is because they might get punished later mm -hmm. if they're not. Mm -hmm. Right? That is also flawed. Very. Because, because an atheist, when he's kind and loving, he's kind and loving 
not worried about punishment. Yeah. Right. Which is actually a more pure state, isn't it? Yes. To be to be kind and loving because you want to be kind and loving and not because you think you're going to get hammered or yeah. punished at some point in the future for being unloving. So one is a, a motivation based <clears throat> on uh, loving desire or a kind desire. And the other one is a motivation based on the avoidance of fear, basically. That's right. Or, or you could say also the, the desire to s satisfy selfish whims, you know, yeah. is also the re one reason yeah. why we're not, you know. Yeah. So, so because we have standards uh, where we feel we are superior to others, mm -hmm. we often, you know, engage those particular standards, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and cause harm to others as a result. Now, I've seen many religions do that, and many people in religion do that, uh, just as much as any atheist might do it. So, yep. so this presupposition that, that to values came from religion mm -hmm. is already flawed, because value mm -hmm. didn't come from religion, obviously. Values uh, have to be developed from within mm -hmm. the person. So, so would you say that, what, how would you answer that question then? Well, the basic question is, is it possible, is, is it possible for an atheist mm -hmm. to be a peace loving, socially responsible person? Of course it is. Yeah. It's, re it's possible for any person, whether mm -hmm. they're atheist or of any religious faith, to be a peace loving, socially responsible person. Mm. Uh, it just depends on their internal ethics and belief systems, yeah. their internal morality yeah. as to what w that will determine that. There's, a, there's another element as well, isn't there, which is um, there's an existing God and then there's a God that we connect to. Uh, you, you know, God, God can exist, but we can have nothing to do with God. So to say that... Which is the case for most religions. Yes. So yeah. to say that the practice of the values is dependent on God existing is not really logical, is it? No, although uh, philosophically, if yep. we could look at it more, a bit more philosophically, um, for love to exist as a concept within humanity, it must also exist as a concept within God. Mm. So philosophically, if you took God away from the equation, then, the, then philosophically you could ask the question, would love even exist? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that, that is a valid philosophical question. Yeah. And, and my feeling to that is nothing would exist, yeah. let alone love. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't take God away from the occasion and have one thing disappear. Yeah. Everything would disappear. Yeah. So love, kindness, goodness, the universe we live in, the earth, everything, yeah. your body, everything would be gone, not, yeah. not, just, yeah. <laughs> not just one thing. Right? Yeah. So, so again, there's this sort of supposition that if God doesn't exist, all these other things can exist. Yeah. And they can't yeah. actually exist without God. Mm -hmm. so, so the reality is values are dependent upon God to a degree because yeah. God has values. But the practice of those values is not Correct. dependent on that. It's the practice of, the, of values that is not dependent upon God. You can choose to practice those values yourself. Although we could also argue that originally, obviously, if God exists and God has values, then God obviously made laws that promulgate those values and mm -hmm. cause us to live happier when we live in harmony with those yes. values. Yes. So, so even then we can't say that it's all without God, Yeah. right, logically. <laughs> yes. So, but I was heading in a different direction and mm -hmm. let me just go there. Okay. So um, the, it's, you've already established in your answer that I can be an atheist and actually display, you know, those qualities that were mentioned in the question, if I so choose. Hmm. Um, I can also be a member of a religion, but who is not connected with God and display those values. Yes. But isn't there a third scenario where I engage a personal relationship with God, in which case the practice of those values becomes far easier for me? Yeah, there's, a, there's many other alternatives, not just uh -huh. the one you've mentioned. Obviously, the one you've mentioned is the highest ideal, and that yeah. is that once you've received some of God's love into your heart and you're actually living in harmony with that love, mm -hmm. It becomes impossible for you to not be kind. Yes. You know, you you impossible for you to be unkind. Yes. So you're not doing it because some because a religion said or because you morally like Obliged made a decision or, and making or decisions. because some logic told you that yep. it's the best way to live yep. with your brother or yep. a sister. You know, fellow you, human. If yep. you believe all fellow humans are your brothers and yep. sisters. And um, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, you. you you're not you're not doing it for any other re reason that that you feel impelled to because uh, because your love that exists within you dictates it. Mm -hmm. Now that's the highest ideal, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but there are many other uh, things that might motivate you to be peace loving and socially responsible. But again, let's define peace loving. 
Well, a lot of people would say that you can be peace loving and still go to war. Mm. Now, different people have different definitions of that. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, whose definition is right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I have a definition that's okay to go to war, even though I'm peace loving. In the name of peace. In the name of peace. And you have a definition that it's not okay to mm -hmm. go to war in the name of peace. Then we're going to be at loggers and I'm going to go to war in the name of peace. Yeah. And, and I'm going to kill people in the name of peace. Mm. Now, what, who, who determines the moral value of this? Mm. Now, this is where it's difficult to determine without God. Yeah. Because God has a strict moral value mm -hmm. on life. Yeah. And under no circumstances is it possible from God's perspective should, that you should go to war mm. under and, any circumstance. And yet both an atheist and a religious person, a member of a religious faith, could and have many times in the past gone to war in the name of peace. So this yes. is again something separate from atheism and religion. So now we're talking about humanity's definition of peace. Yeah. Right? Humanity's definition of what's socially responsible. See, for the average person on this planet, socially responsible often means socially acceptable. Yeah. But a lot of what God requires of us isn't what you'd classify as socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. In fact, God's laws often encourage us to do things that are not as socially acceptable. Socially acceptable depends upon the general condition of everybody in your social circle. Yeah. And some of those conditions are terrible. You know, some of those people believe in murder. Yeah. Some of those people believe in rape. Some of those people believe in drug abuse and alcoholism and all these other things, right? Mm -hmm. If I become socially responsible, yeah. what is the definition of socially responsible? Of who defines what is socially responsible? Mm -hmm. See, responsible from God's perspective is completely different to responsible from human's perspective. Yeah. So, so why a religious person may believe they're being socially responsible when they're actually, from God's perspective, not being socially responsible, mm -hmm. right? An atheist may do the same, mm -hmm. right? Believe that he's being socially responsible from a point of view of his own ethics, but he's not actually being socially responsible from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. So there is still going to be the trouble with this idea or concept in the question is that peace will result if we're all socially responsible and, and, and peace loving. Mm -hmm. No, it won't, because each of us have different definitions mm -hmm. of what that is. Mm -hmm. And because we have different definitions of what that is, we are going to do different things. Mm. We are. And in one case, we might go to war, even though we think we're being peace loving. Mm -hmm. so, so you can see there's a problem with all of the definitions of all of these questions. Yeah. There's a lack of understanding of what causes yeah. the motivations within people. Yeah. Religion doesn't cause people to have better motivations mm. and atheism doesn't either. Yeah, and this is what I found, uh, I find it a bit, I don't know if frustrating is the right word, but it, to me, this whole um, premise of this program uh, reduced the the level of questioning to uh, about religion and atheism and and yet there's there's questions that are related to both of those things that that supersede them or, or overreach as you've just pointed out mm. and and then those things are not explored I guess because it's like it seems to me like religion and atheism has reduced the world's thinking capacity to these two things and one of the things I felt when reading um, the God delusion was you're not talking about God. Like, uh, fair enough if you're going to confront me with some in fact, issues about God. I don't think God. in the whole book there is really any real analysis, analysis of, of the question of God. It's an analysis of society and religion and belief systems and, belief systems and people and, treatment, and war treatment. and terrible things yeah. and things that... Which that, you have to agree with. I, and I did. I agreed with a lot of what he said in that book, you mm. know, because... It, but he's reduced God to religion. That's and right. that, to me, was the worst which, thing Which is one book. of the most illogical things he could have even conceived yeah. of doing. Yeah. And this is what, what I say, like, atheism prides itself on its logic, but that's not what I see. Yeah. What I see is that there's a definite lack of logic in atheism, just as there is in any religion. Yeah. And unfortunately, atheism in that regard becomes a religion yeah. rather yeah. than it being based on scientific fact. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get on to how Richard Dawkins answered that question sure. that I posed to you. Yeah. And I'll just read out from the transcript exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. if, feel free to interject. So this is a direct point. quote from the transcript from ABC? Yes, yep. from the Q&A program. Mm -hmm. Okay. He says, 
Obviously, the answer... Do you want to revise the question quickly? Well, he, he's, the question he was asked was this question, wasn't yes. it? Is it possible for an atheist to be a peace-loving, socially responsible person? Yeah. In what way is the practice of the values, <laughs> the tolerance, peace, political integrity... Um, dependent on an existing dependent God. Dependent on an existing God. Mm. So, and is it possible for an atheist to be a peace-loving, socially responsible person? Mm. Richard Dawkson says, obviously the answer to that question is yes. I mean, it, that could hardly be otherwise. <laughs> It is true that Christianity has adopted many of the best values of humanity, but they don't belong to Christianity or any other religion. I think it would be very sad if it were true that you really did need religion in order to be good. Because if you think about that, what that would mean would be either that you get your morals and your values from the Bible or the Quran or some other holy book or that you are good only because you're frightened of God, because you don't want to go to hell, or you do want to go to heaven. Yeah, and I have to say at this point, totally agree with him, right? Yeah. 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 It's like, of course, that's the main motivation for many so-called Christians and so-called Muslims wanting to, you know, do the right thing, mm. only because they're afraid of what might happen if they don't. And that's a terrible motivation. And it's a wrong, yeah, yeah. bad motivation. Yeah. yeah. Now, as for getting your morals from the Bible, I sincerely hope nobody does get their morals from the Bible. It's true that you can find the occasional good verse, and the Sermon on the Mount would be one example. But it's lost amid the awful things that are dotted throughout the Old Testament, and actually throughout the New Testament as well, because the idea, the fundamental idea of New Testament Christianity, which is that Jesus is the Son of God who is the redeeming humanity who is redeeming humanity from original sin the idea that we are born in sin and the only way we can be redeemed from sin is through the death of jesus i mean that's a horrible idea it's a horrible idea that god this paragon of wisdom and knowledge and power couldn't think of a better way to forgive us our uh, give us our sins than to come down to earth in his alter ego as a son and save himself and have himself hideously tortured and executed so that he could forgive himself again i have to agree with him totally yeah um of course you know it, there is some a lot of logic in what he's stating about the belief system here he's taking from the bible but of course the Koran also has just as many unresolved belief systems as this, yes. right? Yep. And so do many other religious faiths, Hinduism yeah. and, and so forth. Yeah. So, yes, you know, when you look at the logic of these belief systems, obviously that many times not only are they flawed mm -hmm. logically, mm -hmm. but they're also vile and hideous logically. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. know, like yeah. they're, they're, they demonstrate the very worst character yeah. of this so-called powerful you know immensely powerful infinitely powerful being mm -hmm. has a terrible character that's that's basically what it's saying yeah and uh, obviously that can't be the case yeah if 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 god exists and has the character as defined by religious face then we would all be dead already <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah all right <sighs> Let's look at George Pell's answer to that question. Sure. So again, the question was, uh, in, in, just in summary, in what ways the practice of like good, loving, socially responsible values dependent on an existing God, or is it possible for an atheist to, to be peace loving and socially responsible? Mm -hmm. So now George Pell went on quite a bit. And it, if you do watch the video, it's interesting because there's a lot of sort of to and fro between the guys as well, between Pell and Dawkins throughout. Yeah, and, and I, I feel a lot of angry to and fro mm. too, isn't it? Like particularly on part of Dawkins, uh, yeah. you know, he's he obviously gets his, his wind up sometimes yeah, about, yeah. and and he's obviously felt a lot of injustice from religion. Yeah, that he still feels that he hasn't released. Yeah, mm. yeah, and George Pell went on quite a bit in different ways. So I've just summarised what he said. So his answer was yes, atheists can lead a good life and be good people and socially responsible. I think it helps to believe in God because there's a Polish, po Polish poet, Milosz, 
who says that the opium of the people today is the belief that they won't be judged by God when they die. Those who have committed great crimes, done awful things, are going to get away with it and that the people who have suffered unjustly had terrible lives, well, that's it. Mm. Again, like there's truth in what he's saying, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Like the reality is that today people are addicted to the concept that they can do anything and get away with it. They are. And, you know, God, if God's a perfect God, wouldn't have created a universe where you get away with everything, obviously, no. and particularly get away with things that are against any law based decision that yeah. God has made. So, you know, what he's stating is also true. He's saying that it helps to believe in God because it helps to believe that you get judged when you die. Yeah, that's not a good um, premise. That's though, is not it? a good premise no. and, and also not the truth. Yeah. We're, we're judged by the law, if you could call it that. Mm -hmm. Every moment we disobey it. Yeah. So, you know, the results we get from disobeying a law are immediate. Yeah. And uh, they're not something that happens just when we die. Mm -hmm. um, it's just unfortunately that most people on earth are desensitize themselves to the results while they're on earth yeah. and they start to see the results only after they pass. So that's an issue. But and he doesn't that, yeah. understand how things happen after yeah. he passes because no religious faith, including no Christian religious faith, really understands it clearly, mm -hmm. even though I did say, and there are, is recorded in the Bible, some specific indicators of what is going to happen. Yeah. Most religious faiths don't necessarily agree with it. Okay. So, or or understand it. So the reality is most religions don't understand really what's going to happen when you die. But but there is this other problem that results from it, and that mm -hmm. is this concept that you, it's almost like you're living with a constant threat. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, most people who are practices of religion don't know what is right yeah. <laughs> to do. And so they need a book to tell them. Yeah. And, and, uh, and unfortunately, the book tells them many things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. And so they do the things that the book tells them only to find out that those things were sins. Yeah. So, so while a belief in God might help you mm -hmm. to, you know, to constrain your behavior while on earth um, and not, you know, become so evil and, un and malevolent on earth that you destroy things, at the end of the day, the Bible itself has perpetrated malevolent behavior in the name of God. Yeah. So, so, so if, if you're saying that it's God, you, well, yes, I can agree with that. Mm. But if you're saying religions teach the right thing about God, I can't agree with that because well, a lot of what religions teach actually cause people's condition to degrade because it causes them to desire to sin. <laughs> it, or, or in other words, live in disharmony with God's laws. Mm. So while well, he's saying some truth, he himself, I don't feel, really understands that truth. Yeah, and I think there's some things to pick up on in there as well about um, the reason why take... people believe in religions. <laughs> no, uh, no. Well, I think uh, we need to discuss that. Sure. Hmm. Well, do you want to do that? And I'll come back to my points. Sure. Later. Yeah. Yep. So the main reason why many people accept a religious faith is because they believe they personally are being treated unjustly mm -hmm. and they want somebody else to yes. fix that for them at some point in the future. Yeah. And this, his second part of his answer here that you've quoted mm -hmm. is a demonstration of that belief mm -hmm. that God's there to fix all of their, the unjust treatment towards them. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, many people in religions don't realise that a lot of the treatment towards them is neither just or unjust. It's yeah. like it's the result of the interplay of emotional conditions that are in more than one person that are actually both unjust. Yes. You know, in other words, Everybody's unjust, not, yeah. <laughs> not just the person who believes in the religious faith. Right? And, and that is part of the point that I was going to pick up on is that you mentioned about God sort of judging at every moment or the, the operation of God's laws, which we've discussed a lot in other contexts, mm. imposing like penalty or reward constantly upon the soul. They are. Um, but it's the problem is that so many uh, people on earth are misaligned with the operation of those laws they're actually using their will and, and desire to act in opposition to them, that very often injustice is compounded and compounded and compounded. Mm. So there is a lot of suffering that, that a God is blamed for not fixing, but, and yet most, uh, no, you can't say most people, but there's a lot of collusion between people who want to support a person uh, in, in an evil condition because they're afraid or because they mm. want to 
um, you know, preserve uh, something that's that's not loving, as you mm. mentioned. But uh, again, it's like it's like saying, like religion has been a major cause of injustice on this planet, mm -hmm. without a doubt. And even today, it's yes. still a major cause of injustice, mm -hmm. right to this moment. Yeah. The Catholic religion's faith itself is a major cause of unju well, unjust treatment of people fact, on the planet. <laughs> Cardinal Pell has been accused of being uh, uh, involved in very unjust treatment himself. Yeah, but even if he wasn't, the yeah. Catholic Church itself is because it, it, it holds on to wealth that it could yeah. distribute to people who are poor. Yes. But it holds on to it to retain it to itself. Yes. Like it doesn't assist... It, like it severely opposes growth, scientific growth in mm -hmm. many cases. Um, it opposes uh, things like birth control and other things where, where people have the ability to determine more about their mm -hmm. own life. It often opposes scientific advancement. Mm -hmm. uh, can you say then that it is the paragon of <laughs> virtue? Yeah. No, you yeah. can't. In fact, what is doing, you know, even in the Second World War, for two years, it supported Hitler, mm. like outright supported mm. Hitler. So, so, you know, these so-called religions who who act as if they are the paragon of virtue mm -hmm. are so hypocritical in many ways, mm -hmm. imposing virtue upon their adherents, mm -hmm. while at the same time demonstrating a complete lack of virtue themselves as a religious faith. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, a, gr a great deal of unjust injustice on this planet has been created by religious faith mm -hmm. and mind you some injustice on the planet has been created by science too yeah you know the the le unleashing of the atomic bomb is an example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where a great deal of injustice uh, unleashed by science right yeah so you know and you, and you can't really say it's by science but a science assisted the process and the main reason you may, you know, we eventually discovered things like how to harness atomic energy mm -hmm. in the process, but you know, it would have been nicer if that's all we did with it. Yeah. Well, and that's right, and that's what I feel about members of a certain faith. If you're a leader in a certain faith, and you there is injustice within your faith, and you're not doing anything to change it, well, then you're you're responsible to some degree for for what's happening there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we're being, you know accused of you know about it being a bad thing that we've removed pedophiles who mm -hmm. uh, to us have demonstrated they have no desire to uh to, to work through the that, issue which is very different which is different it? very different than a pedophile who does mm -hmm. um mind you i haven't met too many pedophiles who do at this stage but um you know we've been accused of except of getting rid of pedof you know unjustly getting rid of pedophiles out of our out of our audience audiences um and then at the same time accused of ripping people off, you know, yeah. I mean, it's like, man, it's like there is so there is so much uh, misinformation mm -hmm. uh, out there about um, what I feel is truth, mm. while at the same time, there is a huge amount of misinformation that supports untruth. Mm. And and this is an example, I feel um, both atheism and religions have caused many destructive things on this planet mm -hmm. so both of them are not paragons of virtue and how can they be mm -hmm. because they are driven by the individuals in such with such belief systems and the individuals as i've already stated have their belief systems that come from parental harm and mm. childhood abuse and other issues and that are then perpetrated onto the world so and that's immaterial you know that's independent of whether you have a religious faith or not so. Yes, and that's what you were saying earlier, though, just going back to um, Pell's answer, you were saying um, that people accept these kind of belief systems like, oh, God's going to punish them and I can't bear to think that God isn't because they've got unresolved pain. But also, as um, Dawkins pointed out, they act in fear of a bad outcome, but often that's because of the way they were parented as well. There wasn't any reward for good behavior. There was that's only right. punishment for, for bad. And I, you lived with the sense of I know a lot of scientists that are quite uh, what I would classify as uh, superstitious. Mm. Oh, yes. No, sorry, yeah. I, I wasn't uh, speaking. Because yes. they have the same injury. Yeah. The injury of having a parent who's abusive. Yes. And there's a lot of scientists who won't investigate God for the same reason. Yes, I see what you're saying. Because they have a parent who's abusive. 
so 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 a lot of people re accept a religious faith because they've got a parent who's abusive mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people who accept scientific so-called truths you know atheism as an example a lot of people accept atheism for exactly the same reason yeah, yeah. ironically <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just a different bent right yes mm. yeah yeah all right so um would you like to add anything there because we'll move on to the next question in our next session yeah so my, my feeling of this particular question mm -hmm. is firstly the question itself demonstrates some flaws in reasoning in the sense that it, it sort of presupposes some things that are not true mm -hmm. and it also doesn't take into account uh, the behavioral reasons for a person doing what they do the motivations for what they're doing and also their upbringing how that affects what they do mm -hmm. doesn't take into account any of those things and it certainly isn't the highest ideal either. The highest ideal deal, obviously, is that we are a person who loves and that is of highest priority to us. And as a result of that, we also know the right definition of love, which is, as we've illustrated in the question, flawed on mm -hmm. the planet. Atheists are just as flawed with their definition of love as most Christians or Muslims or other religious faiths are. Mm -hmm. And so there's a terrible flaw of what is the definition of what is loving behaviour that is all imposed upon what happens on the earth. Mm. So it's not just a simple matter of you believe in God and so you're going to do the right thing and you're going to be a loving person. It's not like that at all. And it's also not a simple matter of you're an atheist, you're going to do the wrong thing because that's yeah. not true either. And in fact, both things, uh, it's impossible for both to do the right thing until they do have God's view mm. of morality, ironically, mm -hmm. because otherwise we're all going to have independent views of morality that will differ greatly now in some cases we'll agree but in a lot of cases we're going to disagree mm. so it sounds like to technically answer this question you are saying look uh, strictly speaking it's not it's not essential that you believe in god in order to to um have this display these good qualities however you are saying to really know what those qualities are in practice, you will have to not just believe in God, but connect to God. That's right. You can't do it. You can believe in God and still believe the wrong things here. Yeah. You have to connect to God and feel what God mm -hmm. says is the right thing to do yeah. before you'll know what the right thing to do is. Yeah. The other thing I'm also saying is that without God, none of these things would exist anyway. Nothing would exist. Yeah. So, so the reality is values wouldn't exist mm -hmm. just as much as anything else yeah. if God didn't exist. Yeah. So it, from a technical perspective, every value is dependent upon God's existence. Yeah. Because without God, no values or humanity or or atoms or anything else would exist. <laughs> so, you know, so it, it, again, it's difficult to answer these questions. The trouble with a format like this in something like Q&A mm -hmm. is that it, it's a TV hit. Yeah. And um, you're not going to get involved in depth uh, concise answers from just uh, two people who are opposing each other yeah. and who have anger based issues with each other mm. uh, you know proposing qu answers to questions that are flawed at the beginning yeah, it, yeah. It, it, uh, it's an interesting format but it does have limitations mm. doesn't it a lot of yeah. limitations yeah. yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and, 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 and it's highly unlikely for a person through an inter through an interview or or a panel like this to gain any truth, and it's very hard also, I must say, for people like Richard Dawkins and, exactly. and uh, George Cardinal Pell. George Pell to to actually say everything that they believe in yes. the shortest amount of time possible. Uh, they're, they're, they're under lights, they're under pressure, and they've got time constraints. You can't say that what, we've, what we're saying is their full... Uh, no, and, and they may agree beliefs. with some of what I'm saying. Yeah. Obviously, they don't agree with all of it, um, yeah. because if they did, they would have very different answers. But yeah. Um, you know, yeah. um, you can't, we can't, you know, what we've learned through our own interaction with the media is that everything is very heavily edited and mm. restricted and it's almost impossible to gain an accurate conception of what's being said Well, unless you have a live conversation that goes on for hours and hours and yes. hours. <laughs> to be fair, this is a live program, but obviously with time constraints. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. 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 All right, well, should we leave it there today? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This will be, this is just the first in a series um, that I'll be doing to interview Jesus about the concepts of religion and atheism mm -hmm. and hopefully shed some light on the truth about God and love.
It's been enjoyable. Thanks, babe. Yeah, thank you, Noah. <laughs> <laughs>